short key cryptography. In a typical cryptographic setting today, we use a long plain text to encrypt, the material to encrypt is long, lots of bits and bytes, a short key, and we produce a long cipher text. This fact on its own, regardless of the nature of this box here, of the encryption, just the fact that this is long, this is long, and this is short, can be shown with probability calculations to indicate that if you use a key, a certain key, short key, to encrypt this plain text to a cipher text, and the plain text, let's say, is a normal English text, the chance that there will be found another key that will decrypt the same ciphertext to another another plain text is negligible. Negligible. So in other words, from all the possible keys, only the key that would, was actually used to encrypt the plain text, to produce the ciphertext, will reproduce a meaningful English text. And that fact is the basis for the brute force crypt analysis approach. Which is what? It says, we know what are all the possible keys. The key has n bits, so it has 2 to the power of n options. Let's try 1, 2, 3, 4, until 2 to the power of n. All the keys, when we use them with this, with this known encryption system, we use the cipher, a candidate key, we check what comes out, no English text. Check another one. No good English text. And only one, the one that was actually used, will produce a normal English text. So, in other words, all short key cryptographies, all of them, just because this is short and this is long and this is long, are breakable. Because all that we have to do is go through the keys one by one and find the one that was actually used. The question is how long it will take. If the key space is long enough and if we probability-wise have no reason to prefer one key to the other, then it is uh, like in this graph, if we list all the keys and the probability for each key is the same 2 to the power of minus n, so that the total probability is 1, then we can pick them in any order, it doesn't matter, we have no reason to prefer one to the other, then in this case, it might take us too long. And somebody calculates, uh, usually, on the security side, if you use the fastest computer and you check all the keys, it will take you a thousand years. Ha ha ha, we are secure. Now, that is all true if you know how fast the computers of the adversary are. And also, if the adversary really has this situation, that we will see, and that's where probability comes into play, that for a variety of sources, the adversary might be able to draw a probability curve like this, which says that some keys have a higher chance to be the right one, and some keys have a lower chance. And then, instead of checking them randomly, 
the keys are checked from this direction on until you find the right key. And then the search is faster. And you never know if such a probability curve serves the adversary. So that's the uh, main point of short key cryptography. It commits to a single key. There is no equivocation. There is not a question of what key you use because all other keys from the possible list will not work. Only one will. The strength of modern cryptography is that the key space is so big that the probability to find it in a timely manner is small, we believe, but the weakness of it is that the ciphertext commits to the plaintext. You cannot say, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't encrypt this, I encrypt this. Because there is no key that will connect this ciphertext to this plaintext. And we will see equivocation-based cryptography where this is the case later.